Hi guys, I've had some requests on Facebook on how to do my Backbone Bar wallet. Um, and first of all, you have to go to Tying It All Together's page and uh, JD actually shows you how to make the Backbone Bar. So I can't take credit for making the bar, um, but essentially it's four of them stitched together. And um, I used gutted paracord on this because it makes it a lot thinner, a lot more easy to carry. Um, so you guys can just see, I'll run the bar along the camera. Okay. And then there's the core that sticks out that you would use for the stitching, which I'll show you guys here in a second. Um, and you notice that the backbone bar has holes in the stitching that makes it for the core to be able to put through really easy. Um, so it's uh, it's not a hard thing to do, it's just time consuming uh, stitching through each and every hole to make sure that everything holds together. Um, and then one of the differences you guys notice right here is I do one cobra stitch to kind of finish everything off and make it even. Um, at the top here. Um, I use uh, eight cords. Okay? I use four for the backbone bar and then four cords. Okay, Obviously double over so you get two here um, for the core and um, whatever color you want the backbone bar I would use 11 feet and for your core um, you can use 10. You'll have plenty for it left over but you know it's always good to have more cord than not. So First things first, learn how to do the backbone bar, and then I will show you guys how to stitch everything together. And just so you can see, I do have two of them put together here. And the black and red is what is used to stitch the two black backbone bars together. And then obviously you would have four stacked on top to make the complete wallet. And I will show you guys how I do that uh, next. All right, so at this point, you guys know how to make the backbone bar, and I have two of them right here, and there's going to be two cores that are coming out, and I essentially want to take the right core on this side and the left core on this side, and that's what's going to crisscross back and forth like lacing up a shoe. So I'm going to start by pulling from behind this end through. This side, this end through. By the way, hemostats are great to use when you're trying to thread cord through. Um, you can pick these up for a few bucks. I got mine at Harbor Freight. Um, so now that you have it through on this side, then I'm going to start the X pattern. So I'm going to use the cord on the left backbone bar crossing over to the right pulling it through and then I get them lined up so they're even and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side grab the end Pull it through. So there's your first X. And you're going to continue crisscrossing all the way down. You guys can see. And then this is a finished one that I have. So the pattern should look like this going all the way down. Okay, so now those, you'll have two cords that are at the bottom and you'll have still two cords that are at the top. That's fine. There's going to be a lot of cord that you're going to have to tuck in and through. That's one of the lengthy processes of this. So I will show you guys what all of these look like together after I stitch them all up. Alright, so at this point I have all four of the backbone bars stitched together. You should have three rows of X's that are on both sides. And uh, it's cleaned up a little bit. I started tucking some of the cord in, and I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, if done right, you should have two outer cores right here. These two are what you're going to use to zigzag back and forth when the wallet's folded in half. Um, so this is going to become uh, the sides of the wallet here. Then you should have six strands that are on this end as well. Um, so you guys can see, I started tucking these extra black cords okay, of the backbone bar through just one of the loops that's made 
here and I'll demonstrate on this last one. I left the, left this last one open so I can show you guys how I do it. But all I do is just take the hemostats and I get it underneath one of the loops. I'm going to grab the cord and I'm going to pull it through and grab the other one and do the same thing. Grab it here and pull it through. Now I'm going to do to each one of these, I'm going to cut them with scissors, okay, and then I'll melt them. So now the side that you're tucking all the cords in, that's the side that's going to be on the inside and folded, so everything looks clean when you guys are all done. I'll explain here in a little bit what I'm doing with these extra cords and what I'm doing here as well. So, alright guys, at this point I've tucked all of the black cord, and here's the leftover of that. So you can notice the shiny parts on each row. That's where I have cut and melted them so they stay in place. This cord and this cord is going to be what's used to stitch the sides of the wallet. And as I come over here, you can see where I had, used to have the six strands. I have now tucked two underneath this loop right here. And I've tucked two strands underneath this loop right here. Now these two strands are what's going to be used for the cord lock so it actually will be able to pull tight and hold everything in place when the wallet's complete. And we are almost done now. So I have everything uh, tucked and snipped away essentially. Here's our two cords that we're going to use which I'll explain here in a minute on uh, stitching the sides. And then if I flip this over you can see everything now is melted and burned. So we only have these four cords that we're dealing with now. Alright, so at this point uh, I folded everything in half and I already started to stitch one side of the wallet so you guys can start to see it's taking its form. Um, I had the one strand, which is this one, just on the left side, essentially will zigzag okay, between each of the holes okay, right in here. And you need something to form it. I used my iPhone. Um, which slips in there so of course if you made this a little bigger you can actually have a phone holder as well too um, but I stitched it through there and I had it tight so it would form and then I'm gonna go ahead and you essentially do the same thing on the other side I'm gonna take this out so you guys can see what I'm doing here so you'll go back and use your hemostats so I'm gonna go through <clears throat> this top side here through. So you have the start of it and I'll match it to about the other side. I flip it around and I'm literally just going to go through each opening. Alright, this one. So you're going to continue this pattern back and forth, okay, all the way until you get to the end, which the cord will be like this, and then you would cut each end, melt it, and then I use a piece of metal or underside of a plate um, to push it against it there, and then you'll have both sides finished up. Alright, so this is the last step. I uh, have these two cords left over, and this is what's going to actually hold everything in place. So all I'm doing is taking cord through. And then I'll do the same thing on this one. We'll take it through on this side. So this is where the cards will stay in place or whatever else you decide to put in here. And then I'm going to finish this by putting a cord lock through both of these and then tying a knot. And here's the finished wallet. And again, you guys can use this for a lot of different things, not just a wallet. If you want to hold business cards, uh, you can make a bigger one to hold a cell phone, whatever you want. Um, here's the cord lock here. Okay. So I made it big enough where the two cords would be on the side so you can get whatever it is you need out. But you can cinch it down and then use the cord lock. And that's what's going to keep everything in place. So here it is.